Richard, a young man who craves adventure and danger, ventures to Bangkok, where he meets a strange man. He enthuses Richard about a hidden paradise in the area and leaves him with a map. Wanting to experience something new, Richard journeys with his newfound companions, Etienne and Francoise, searching for the perfect beach. Richard finally arrives in Bangkok and is challenged to drink snake blood. Though he refuses at first, his curiosity and pride get the better of him, so he follows the stranger and chugs the exotic drink. Afterward, he leaves without looking back and checks into a cheap hotel. After showering in the communal bathroom, he sees tourists watching a movie, the same activity they do at the comfort of their own home, in which he doesn't see the point of. Then, he heads back to his room but is unable to open his door until a beautiful woman, Francoise, assists him. Unfortunately, she already has a boyfriend, Etienne, which disappoints him. Late that night, a strange man who calls himself Daffy Duck comes shouting in the middle of the night. He happens to be the guy in the next room to Richard, and he tears the screen divider to ask the young man if he has some smoke. They talk to each other, and Daffy narrates a story about his secret adventure on an island where a perfect beach can be found. He says that only people with ideals come to that island, but one day, he asked his friends to leave, but they wouldn't. Daffy shakes his hands and expresses his pleasure in meeting Richard. Then, they call it a night. The following day, Richard returns to the hotel after his exploration, and he sees the cleaning lady mopping the wall near the light bulb. He warns the woman since she might be electrocuted, but she confidently says there's nothing to worry about. Then, she informs Richard that there's a letter on his door. He opens it and sees a map of the island's location. He smiles in anticipation and turns to the cleaning lady, but she's nowhere to be found. Therefore, he goes to Daffy's room to ask him, but once he opens the door, he sees the room covered in blood. He enters and sees Daffy's body lying on the floor on the other side of the bed, with the knife he used to end his life and a couple of strange drawings. A doodle of Daffy with an X mark, a drawing of a man, and a sketch of a bonfire. Afterward, the police investigate the scene and ask Richard for the details, but they become frustrated when they discover that the man used a fake name and documents, so they close the case. Then, Richard returns to his room, and after deliberation about whether to follow the map, he invites Etienne and Francoise. This becomes his best decision since Etienne manages the travel bookings. Before reaching their destination, they stop by a tourist spot. Richard admires admiringly stares at Francoise until Etienne interrupts, informing him of a problem. They can't land at Koh Samui, the island near their destination, as it's part of the national park, and it's forbidden to go there. Therefore, the couple suggests swimming from the nearest island to their target location. Moments later, Richard meets two American surfers, Sammy and Zeph, who offer him shelter from the monsoon since he lost his room key. The men share some drinks and talk about random things until the surfers mention the rumors of a perfect beach location on an unknown island. The following morning, Richard leaves them a copy of the map before resuming his journey with his companions. At the same time, his infatuation with Francoise increases. Finally, they land on the island closest to Koh Samui where they spend the night. The next day, the trio gaze at their destination, intimidated by the distance they'll have to swim. Despite this, the determined adventurer swims, followed by the couple. As they stop halfway, Etienne anxiously informs Richard that he's seen a shark fin, which causes them to panic. Suddenly, Francoise is gone, and only her floater remains. Richard feels a pull on his leg, and the woman emerges as the couple laughs hysterically at the victim of their practical joke. They all resume swimming and finally arrive on the island, where they see a vast unauthorized plantation. The couple explores the area enthusiastically, but Richard spots a monkey. When he approaches it, he finds it attached to a sleeping thigh man armed with a rifle. The monkey screeches and the man awakens. Fortunately, Richard manages to notify his companions, and they all nervously take cover in the plants while waiting for the man to leave. Just as a monkey spots them and is about to alert its owner, Richard sprays it with water so it leaves. Immediately, they run away and reach a waterfall. Francoise suggests jumping, but the men harshly brush her off and blame each other, escalating the confrontation. With this, Francoise jumps without warning and emerges on the water, saying it's safe. Seeing the courage of the woman, the men also jump. Then, Kitty, an inhabitant of the secret community, congratulates them for reaching the place, but he informs them that they need to meet Sal, the leader, and escorts them home. When they enter the vicinity, the group sees an entire community of travelers who have already established their little civilization, and Richard feels the hostility brewing underneath. The travelers gather, and Richard gives the map to Sal while narrating Daffy's demise. The leader explains that Daffy is a founder of their community, but he got depressed and left. Then, she asks if they gave anyone a 
copy of the map, and they all say no. Sal burns the map and emphasizes that they all value secrecy. Everyone cheers, and they go to the beach, marveling at its beauty. Days go by, and the three settle more in their new community. The people are generally welcoming and friendly, and the place fosters freedom for all. Sal also explains to them that they trade the unauthorized plant to buy things they need from the city, but they grow their own because of an agreement with the Thai farmers. She adds that their neighbors insist on not bringing new people, and they comply with that, making the three very lucky to be accepted. They learn how to fish from the Swedes, Christo, Sten, and Carl. Afterward, they ensure to bring the catch to Unhygienix, their chef, who is obsessed with soap. In the community, their ritual is for the last person to arrive to tattoo the next, which the newcomers do. One day, TD talks to Richard since he noticed the man's infatuation towards Francoise, listing how incompatible he is with the woman. Suddenly, a man named Gregorio wishes to return to the mainland due to a severe toothache, but the men stop him. Bugs, Sal's boyfriend, pulls Gregorio's tooth with pliers while laughing at him. Sal asks Richard how he feels about the scene, and the man says he understands since they have a secret to keep. That night, Etienne and the men party while Richard sits on the side. Francoise calls him, and they walk by the beach. The woman uses this opportunity to confess that she's purposely ignoring Richard because she likes him, and it's wrong because she has a boyfriend. Then, Francoise urges him to see the glowing planktons and the shrimps, but as they dive into the water, their feelings take over, and they share a passionate night. They promise each other that this will be their secret. The following day, Etienne confronts Richard about his affair with Francoise. Despite the other's denial, Etienne declares that everybody already knows, so if the woman is happy with Richard, he'll respect it. Afterward, a typhoon arrives, and the men can't fish. This scenario makes the community very hungry for days. Richard suddenly swims to go fishing despite the men's reminders. Moments later, Francoise and the travelers yell at him to get out of the water while gesturing wildly. Due to the heavy rain, Richard can't hear what they're saying. Before he knows it, a shark charges at him. Fortunately, he survives unharmed. And that night, he narrates exaggeratedly and brags to everyone about how he managed to hunt the shark that they eat for tonight's dinner. However, Bugs interjects to note that he's lucky the shark is a baby, but if it's an adult, he's long gone. Richard dismisses the comment arrogantly, and they all disperse for the night while Francois settles beside him. Soon, Sal announces that their rice caught some fungi and they need to restock by buying rice from Gopangan. Nobody volunteers to come with her, so she picks Richard. Later, everyone goes to Richard to ask him to buy their things. Surprisingly, Bugs arrives, but instead of giving a list of items, he warns Richard not to do anything funny with Sal. When Richard and Sal return to the city, the man finds it chaotic and disturbing, making him understand why keeping their place a secret is necessary. After buying everything they need, the two go to a bar to have some drinks. But Sammy and Zeph recognize Richard and greet him enthusiastically. The two introduce Richard to their companions as the one with the map, so Richard immediately stops the surfers from talking and even ends up yelling at them. Due to this, Sal discovers the truth and becomes upset, but she believes Richard when he states that the surfers don't have a copy of the map. However, Sal instructs Richard to sleep with her, and in fright that the woman will inform the community of his secret, he agrees, but they both agree to keep this a secret, especially from Bugs. They return to the beach and distribute the goods to the community. When Richard looks for Francoise, he finds her sulking and gives her a disposable camera. The woman asks about his trip with Sal due to the rumors that the leader is attracted to him. Richard lies about it and proceeds with his usual life in the community, trying to forget what happened between him and Sal. On the other hand, Francoise happily takes a group picture of everyone basking in happiness. One day, the Swedes return from fishing, crying for help. Everyone rushes to them and sees shark bites on their body. Unfortunately, Stan passes away, while Christo is heavily injured. He tells Sal to call a doctor to save him, but the leader is stern in making him choose whether they will send him to the hospital or he'll stay on the island. Afraid of returning to the water, Christo chooses to stay, and the travelers hold a funeral for Sten. However, the community remains disturbed due to Christo crying in pain, and only Etienne attends to him. Later, Richard and the men bring Christo into the forest with a little tent despite Etienne's disagreement about this being immoral. Soon, the community returns to being a perfect place, having nothing to worry about, but Richard sometimes gets nightmares of Daffy, who's triggering his conscience. The next day, Sal secretly calls Richard to a hill where he spots the surfers with some tour guides on the neighboring island, holding the copy of the map Richard gave. She commands the man to keep an eye on the strangers, retrieving
leave the map and turn them away. Richard sulks by his watch post that evening, but Francois suddenly charges and slaps him. She informs her boyfriend that Sal has already told the community about their night in the city, and she's the last to know. Richard is dumbfounded, and Francois won't accept any explanation. Then, she walks away brokenhearted. Days pass, and the strangers remain on the neighboring island while Richard becomes more indifferent to the community. He soon finds entertainment on the hills, pretending to play hide and seek with the armed farmers like in a video game. The isolation makes Richard lose his sanity. As he begins thinking that the forest is his territory, the farmers are his defenders, and the strangers are the intruders. He also hallucinates being on a battlefield with Daffy as they fulfill their mission of ending the lives of the strangers using a machine gun. One day, Kitty finds him at the corner of the storage room and tries to make some sense of him, telling him to come back to them because something's wrong with him. However, it's all in vain, as all Richard can say is how he admires Daffy. Afterward, Richard returns to the hills and sets up traps while talking to the deceased Daffy, who keeps supporting him and doing crazy things. Moments later, Richard infiltrates the farmer's base when they're all asleep. He takes a rifle and pretends to shoot one of them. Then, he silently returns it beside another sleeping farmer. He also grabs the man's turban and ties it to his head. The following day, surfers, with their tour guides, manage to cross the sea by building a raft. They celebrate their success, not knowing that Richard has been lurking around and pretending to shoot them. Then, they arrive at the unauthorized plantation and bask in their discovery. However, the armed farmers stop them in their tracks. In a panic, Zeph explains that they have a map and hands money to the farmers. When this doesn't work, he offers his watch. But as he steps forward, one young farmer gets shocked and shoots him. In fear, the rest of the strangers try to escape, but they're all fired at. One woman manages to go far, but Richard blocks her, screeching like a wild animal. The woman freezes, and the farmers take the chance to shoot her. Her blood splatters Richard's face as she falls in front of him. He somewhat regains his sanity and realizes what he's done, but a farmer arrives and sees him. The farmer chases him, so he runs, passing by the trap he made. Luckily, the man steps on it, and Richard manages to escape. Soon, he returns to the community and finds everyone in the hall, where Sal delivers her speech about how wonderful their years have been on the island together with everyone. He finds Francoise and Etienne. Then, he explains that they need to leave the island due to what he has witnessed. However, Etienne insists that he can't leave Christo alone since he's the only one taking care of the man since the incident. Due to this, Richard instructs his friends to go to the boat and wait for him there. Once he's alone with Christo, he kisses the man on the forehead, waking him up. Then, he presses the sick man's nose until he stops breathing. Richard sobs quietly and turns off the light in the small tent. When he steps out, he hears gunshots as the farmers have infiltrated the assembly hall. Then, someone hits Richard on the head, and he passes out. He regains consciousness, and the farmer leader sternly explains that they're all simple farmers doing their job to feed their families. If too many people were on the island, they'd lose their work, and their families would suffer. The leader proclaims that they don't want to hurt anyone, especially as they already have an agreement to live in peace as long as no more people will come. However, the community broke the rule and even gave away the map. He commands everyone to leave the island and forget about it. Everyone agrees, but Sal sternly declines, proclaiming they're not going. Richard interjects. However, Sal shuts him off by blaming him for giving the surfers a copy of the map. Upon hearing this, the farmer leader brings out his revolver and removes five bullets. He tells Sal to end Richard's life if they want to stay. Richard seeks help, but only Etienne tries to assist him, who's immediately subjugated. Bugs grabs Richard and urges Sal to shoot, while the younger man plays mind games with Sal, saying that this is not as simple as Christo's case since everyone will see the price of keeping the paradise a secret. Everyone pleads for Sal to stop, but she pulls the trigger. Luckily, the chamber is empty. The travelers realize Sal's willingness to commit such an act to keep their perfect community. Horrified of the scene, they all scamper to leave while the farmer leader smirks triumphantly. They use the raft the surfers made to depart from the island together, leaving their sins behind and going on separate ways. On the other hand, Sal remains on the island, too attached to her beliefs. In the United States, after some time, Richard goes to an internet cafe to check his email. He discovers a message from Francoise with an attachment of a photo they took during the peaceful times at the beach. He smiles in nostalgia and realizes that paradise is not a place but a feeling of belonging that could last forever. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.